I have been Zambian, mm -hmm. I have been Tanzanian, I have been Guinean, mm. I'm a Ghanaian now. Ah, eat no. your heart out, yeah. eat your heart out. I've been Tanzanian, I've been Kenyan, mm. I've been United Nations, now British. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha. Look at me. Sir Winston Churchill. <laughs> <laughs> at last, <laughs> at last. <laughs> I don't have a home in London. I came here running away from Botswana. My family is strewn all over the place. My wife is in the United States because she couldn't work here. And she's applied for asylum there. My children are in Holland because I can't take them to the United States. We haven't been able to acquire visas for them. So I'm just roaming. I don't have a country as it is. And then we formed the best South African jazz group at the time, which was uh, the Jazz Epistle, with uh, Kipi Mwigetzi, Dollar Brand, Ibrahim, uh, Hugh Masigera, myself, Johnny Hertz, uh, and Makai and Jogo, who's also in Switzerland now. We were supposed to go to a festival in Switzerland, but then, uh, then there was the Sharpville Massacre, in a state of emergency, we disbanded because uh, no more than five Africans were supposed to be sitting together. And as a group, we were six already without an audience. <laughs> so that was out. Hugh left for England in 1916. In 61, I followed. Our presence as artists in the first place mm. uh, is disturbing to the South African uh, True, true. Because Mm -hmm. We always speak to a crowd. Always. We, Whenever we, you perform, it could mm -hmm. be a flop, mm -hmm. but it's more than one or two people. Yeah, and they, they yeah. know that. Yeah. And uh, they don't like you it. are communicating all the time mm -hmm. in various languages, the universal language, music, mm -hmm. you know, and you're saying your piece. And as a South African, you are always saying something about South Africa. And if you say anything about South Africa. Mm. I don't care whether you are, you are pro-government or anything. Mm. No. Uh, you will be talking about South Africa. You know, something like it, happy and like that is something that reminds me of my father and, you know, my mother, the little song that, you know, like I said, everybody in the family had a little song, you know, because we had a piano at home and my father would come in and play a little bit, you know, a song. And my mother would have a song. To, you know, and th those were the little happy moments that you know would come to mind, and they would they would, they would be playing that old type of music, you know. Mm. <clears throat> uh, 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 they're not really pianists, you know, just planking, planking. Just I mean, like me, I'm not a pianist, you know, just self-taught person. But uh, the th thing, things like that that brought us together, you know, as a family, you know, I found. Again, they were they were the same things. They were they were effective that way, you know, in retaining our culture. And I would I would go through the hits over the years, you know, playing some of the hits of our music, you know, of the bands, you know, and 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 make like a a, 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 a name that tune kind of thing, you know, you know. So I play I play see. What is that? You know, what do you remember what the tune is? Oh, hey, the spawn on the air, guess. Spawn on the air, guess. Spawn on the air, Which was a hit during our uh, 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 boyhood days, you know, when we were still in <laughs> knee pants. See, that way we were able to retain our identity, our culture. It's almost like uh, you, somebody trying to find root in a place. When, when, when you are in exile, there's the, always that temporary feeling. You know, you never really settle. You can't even knock uh, pictures on the wall. You know, you can't put, put pictures. I mean, at the last place I was living in, I, I didn't even put the award certificates that I, I, I got. 
because uh, I don't own the wall, you know. I mean, I knew I was going to be moving soon, so everything is just so temporary, so they just stay in the suitcase. You, you, you're forever trying to adjust. At the same time, you are aware of the fact that you are losing your own identity, your own culture. The one thing that was helping me retain most of my culture was the fact that I made my, I opened up my house in New York to all these people, especially people who were just coming back from home. I mean, I did things that a lot of people you know, shudder when they think about. I used to slaughter sheep in my backyard, you know, smother them from the farms and have um, the ceremonies, you know. You know, I remember one, one uh, friend of ours, who was a professor, he found us in the house there. We had a big jug, you know, it was like a vase, actually. We poured the beer in there, you know, from the bottles, and we were drinking, communal drinking from this thing and passing it around, just like we would at home with the African brew. And he said, oh, your boys haven't arrived, you know. <laughs> but we had arrived, we just wanted to be home for the moment, and we would eat, eat out of one dish, you know, and just try to do what we would do at home. There's always a feeling of going back home. You always think, you know, within maybe the year or the next five years, or the, you know, things are going to resolve and I'm going to be home. That feeling, you know, you live with that thing. You, you can never just belong. Even with all the awards and the success I gained for composing the music for the film Cry Freedom, I still didn't achieve a place. I'm still roaming all over the world, knocking on doors. When we're talking about people adjusting to the different cultures, it's not an easy thing. It isn't an easy thing. Some people just break down, you know. Some people end up being alcoholics, trying to change your life when you are an adult. You know, it's not very easy. You see, and, and sometimes uh, you can almost just see somebody that he, he's going, but you, you can't help, you can't help them. You can't say or do, you, you talk to them, but I mean, the adjustment is just too heavy, you know. In 1976, uh, I, got, I was in Boston, I got a call from Kaifa Semenya. He called me and said, well, he was going to Botswana, there's a tour. And on the next day, I called him and said, hey, hey, man, reserve me a ticket, man, I'm going on to the trip. I'm going, you know, I just have to go. And of course, my mother knew about it. And uh, she took everybody and said, for the first time, I'm going to fly. You know, she'd never been in a plane before, but she said, I'm going to fly to Botswana because that guy might just be there for a day and might leave before I could really see him. I'm going to Botswana to see my son after 15 years. present wife. And she looked at me and started making jokes and laughing and say, oh, my chubby little son and everything. And 
she disappeared and went to the bathroom. I knew she was going to cry, you know. She went there, cried by herself, you know, and I think she prayed and came back all jolly again, you know. keep crying out, you know. I couldn't cry. I couldn't laugh. You know, I, I was just confused. You know, all, everything happened at the same time. You know, uh, you know, where you have that kind of silly, you know, feeling, you know, I, I, you know. And then I felt a, a big sense of responsibility right at the same time, you know. And, uh, and also uh, guilt that I had not been there and it, it felt like I had something I had missed out on, you know. Uh, 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 this, this, you know, surrounded with so much love, you know, and then you can kind of actually feel it, you know. And you, you're just overwhelmed by this whole thing, you know. That's, that's all I can say. You know, I, I felt like a, a, a little baby again in my mother's arms. You see, that's what it was. And, uh, and yet I still felt this great responsibility, you know, that I, you know, it's like I've been irresponsible somewhat and I have to catch up with all of this, you know, to take care of this. That's how, well, my mother had just said, I want to come and live with you. And I said, yes, yes, you have to, you know, you have to. If you listen carefully to all South African music, that cry is there. I don't care whether you raise the tempo, you know, you could raise the tempo, but when this starts playing, there is that, you know, lament. I, I, I hear it. I hear it.